today we're looking at lead code number 912. It's called sort an array and this is part of a series. Um, in this particular video we're going to be looking at insertion sort. How to sort an array using the insertion sort method. And this is actually a really important sorting method because insertion sort at worst time is no better than bubble sort or selection sort. However, if the array is partially sorted, insertion sort is linear time, which is really good. Okay, it's actually, it's better than merge sort and it's better than quick sort if the array is partially sorted. So that's why insertion sort is a very important sorting algorithm to know. It's not that hard to implement and it's not that hard to understand. But the thing you want to remember about insertion sort is that if your array is partially sorted, meaning there's only a couple uh, uh, elements that are out of place, then it is an extremely efficient algorithm. However, if your array is completely unsorted, meaning if you had an array with the values like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, so it's just backwards, uh, insertion sort is no better than bubble sort. And in that case, you want to use a divide and conquer sorting strategy, uh, something like merge sort or quick sort. Okay, so let's jump over to the conceptual and take a look at how insertion sort works. So we'll, we'll, we'll run through two, two different examples. Uh, one, we'll look at an array that's very unsorted, like the one we have here. And then we'll go ahead and replace it with an array that's partially sorted. And you'll see how, how when the array is partially sorted, you can actually get linear time with insert, insertion sort and constant space. Okay, so the idea is, is we're gonna have, we're gonna have three pointers here, okay? And what we wanna do is we wanna check, we wanna have a loop, an outer loop with i, okay? And what i is gonna do is it's gonna have, if we're gonna initialize a j variable and we're gonna set it to where i is at, and then we're gonna check at j minus one, okay? And we're gonna say while while j minus one, while j is greater than zero, okay, so j is not in the, in the zeroth element, but it's, it's greater than zero. And while array at j and array at j minus one, while array at j is less than array at j minus one, we're gonna keep on doing this while loop. We're gonna keep on uh, uh, decrementing j. And you'll see that more clearly uh, in a second. So if that condition is true, and let's just go ahead and write this down, that way uh, we can reference it. Okay, so while uh, j is greater than zero, okay, and array at j, okay, is less than, array at j is less than array at j minus one. Okay, so while this condition is true, we're going to uh, do some work, okay? And so what we wanna do is, is if, if that condition is true, j is greater than zero and array at j, which is one right here, is less than array at j minus one, we're gonna go ahead and swap those numbers. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and swap this five, j with j minus one. Okay, so we're gonna get one here and we're gonna get five here. And then we're gonna decrement j. Okay, so j minus one is out of the picture, j decrements. Now, j is, gonna, is not going to go into any more because j is now uh, uh, zero and so this while loop breaks out. Once that while loop breaks out, we increment i, okay? We go back into our outer loop and we go ahead and increment i, and then we do the same thing. We set j at i, okay? And we wanna check, is the value at j right here, is it less than the value at i and is j greater than zero? In this case, it is. So we're gonna go ahead and swap uh, j and j and j minus one. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and remove this five here and remove this one and just swap it, okay? 
And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna decrement j, and then we'll go ahead and do that same process. j is greater than zero, but is j array at j, is it less than array at j minus one? It's not, okay? And so we're gonna, it doesn't meet the condition of the while loop, and so we move on to our outer loop. Now just to make this a little more clear, I'm gonna also just go ahead and put the indices in here. Just so it's a little more clear. Okay, so now we're in our outer loop. We're gonna go ahead and increment our i here. We're gonna set our j to our ith index, and then we are going to uh, have a pointer to j minus one. And we're gonna check again, is j greater than zero? It is, j is at three, it is greater than zero. And is array at j, which is two, is it less than array at j minus one? It is. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna swap these numbers going to swap this 5 with this 2. Okay, and so this 2 is going to come here, and this 5 is going to come here. And now we're going to decrement our j. So j minus 1 will get set when we decrement our j. j will come here, and then here is our j minus 1. And we check j is greater than 0, but element or value at j of i is 2. It is not less than j of i minus 1. So we break out of that, we don't do anything in the while loop, and we increment our i. Okay, j is gonna get initialized to i, and then we'll have a pointer to j minus one. And again, we check the same thing. Is j greater than zero? j is greater than zero. Uh, and is j, uh, uh, the value at array of j, which is zero, is it less than the value at j of j minus one, array at j minus one? It is, it meets that condition. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna swap these values. We're gonna swap this five and this zero here. And then we're gonna go ahead and decrement our j. Okay, j dec decrements, and then when we decrement j, we're gonna check j minus one. Uh, does it meet this while condition? It does. And so again, we're gonna swap these two. We're gonna swap this two, and we're gonna swap this zero. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and decrement our j and j minus one. Okay, so j minus one will come here and j will come here. And again, does it meet that condition of the while loop? It does, and because it does, we're gonna go ahead and swap those values. Okay, we'll swap this one and we'll swap this zero. And you can see here, if you're, if you're starting to notice, what you're gonna start seeing is that the smallest value as this j runs through is gonna bubble up to the front, okay? So just to kind of uh, make it clear, j decrements one here. We have j minus one, does it meet the while loop condition? It does, so then we go ahead and swap these values. And we have um, zero here and one here, right? And now we go ahead and now j is not greater than, because j is gonna decrement here. So you're gonna get j decrementing here and it's not gonna meet this condition of the while loop where j must be greater than zero, and so we break out of that inner loop, and then we go ahead and increment our i, set our j here, and set our j minus one. Now, when we do this, all that's gonna happen is that zero there is gonna bubble up to the first index, okay? And so I don't, I don't feel we need to go through the whole iteration again, but you can see that this zero, all these numbers are gonna get moved forward, so we're gonna get one, two, five, uh, one, two, five, and uh, zero and one, okay? And the, uh, and the array is swapped, or the array is sorted. Now, with this, when the array is fairly unsorted, you can see that sometimes we can, we can just increment i and we don't have to do that inner loop, but if, if, you're, if you have a zero at the end, like let's say we had zero here at the fourth index or the fifth index, right? Then we had to move this zero all the way down that array and bubble it up to the, uh, to the front. And so you can see if the array is backwards, like let's say you have five, four, three, two, one, you're gonna have to grab that one, move it all the way to the front, move all those to the front, and that's gonna give you quadratic time. That's, that's where it's bad on time. But how is, this, how is this algorithm efficient if the array is already partially sorted? Well, let's take a look at this. Let's say our numbers are Let's say we have this array right here, 
and we just move around this five and this two. So this, this whole array is sorted, except for that five and two. We're gonna go ahead and put the five over here and the two right over here. And let's go ahead and move our ith uh, index here. J minus one will be here and J will be here. And let's say we're just starting this, this from fresh, okay? Well, you can see that this J loop is never gonna get initialized because when I comes here, J is initialized to I, an array at J needs to be less than array at J minus one. It's not the case here. When I moves over here, you can see that array at J is greater than J minus one. Then I is gonna move over here. J will initialize there and J minus one is here. You can see that this condition for the while loop is not gonna get met j is not less than uh, j minus one. I moves forward, uh, j initializes here, j minus one is here. Again, we don't have, um, we don't have any uh, uh, condition where, where uh, the j is less than j minus one. It's not until we get to the very end here do we see that we have an instance where um, the value at j is less than the value at j minus one. And then what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take this two and move it all the way forward, okay? We're gonna have to bubble it all the way to the uh, front. And, um, or not to the front, but actually to its correct place, which is gonna be right over here, actually. So what, let's just go ahead and step through that. It, is the value at uh, j, is it less than the value at j minus one, it is, so we go ahead and swap these two. Okay, and so we're gonna have uh, two here and five here, and then we're gonna go ahead and decrement j. Okay, and now we do the same comparison. Is the value at uh, j, is it less than the value at j minus one? It's not, and then so now we move back into our i loop I breaks out and our array is sorted. And what is our time complexity here? Well, it's linear, right? Because all we're doing is we're just moving I across our array and only when we get to this point do we actually have a swap, okay? And we only just do one swap here and then we're out of the array. And so you can see if your array is partially sorted, insertion sort is the way to go. It's, it's very, very efficient if you don't have a lot of uh, values that are out of place it's much better than the divide and conquer sorts. Um, so that's the main thing to know about insertion sort. Uh, so if your, if your um, array is partially sorted, then our time complexity for this, let's say we can say partially sorted, okay, our time is gonna be O of N, okay? And our space complexity is going to be uh, constant because we're not creating any new, uh, um, new space relative to the input. Now, if our A array is very unsorted, okay, it's, it's uh, unsorted, um, or if it's, if, um, if it's backwards, right, our worst case, worst case, what's it gonna be? we're gonna be O of N squared. Okay, and we'll still get constant space, but we're gonna be uh, O of N squared on time. So that's insertion sort. Let's jump into the code and code this out. Um, and it's a, it's a really important one to know uh, uh, because this is actually, it's not too hard to code out and it actually is quite efficient. So if, if you are dealing with any sort of problem where your input array is partially sorted, go with insertion sort. It's a great way to do it and it's very efficient. Okay, so we're gonna have our outer loop here. So we'll say for that i equals zero, i is less than nums.length, i plus plus. We're actually gonna initialize i to one. Okay, so i is gonna be at one here. And now, what are we gonna do? We are going to have a while loop in here. We're gonna set j, so let's go ahead and set j to i. Okay, and now we're gonna have a while loop and we're gonna say, as long as j is greater than zero, 
and uh, nums at j is less than nums at j minus 1, what do we want to do? We want to swap. We want to swap uh, nums at j and nums at j minus 1 with nums at j minus 1 and j. And then we want to decrement j. OK, and that's it. And then we just want to return our nums. OK, so, so it's not too difficult to uh, code this out. Let's go ahead and run this code, make sure it works. At worst case, it is not very efficient, and that's why it takes so long. You can see here how long it took. It's because at worst case, uh, it's, it's no better than bubble sort. But if your array is partially sorted, this is definitely the way to go. Because you can see it's not very complicated to code out. And uh, it's actually more efficient than the divide and conquer sorts if your array is partially sorted. OK, so that is lead code uh, number 912, sort an array, special, uh, specifically insertion sort. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I will see you on the next one.